Hello, this is lesson 9.3, Area of Composite Figures. We'll be working from pages 277 to 281. So we'll be working from standard G6. I can solve real world and mathematical problems involving area, volume, and surface area of two and three dimensional objects composed of triangles, quadrilaterals, polygons, cubes, and right prisms. So hopefully you had a lot of solving of these types of problems in sixth grade so that this will just kind of be a review for you with just a little bit of a step up in how to solve some of these. So we gotta start with the definition. We have composite figures. So what is a composite figure? A composite figure is a shape that can be divided into more than one of the basic figures. So for instance, you might divide a composite figure into a triangle and a square, or maybe a triangle and a rectangle, or maybe a trapezoid and a rectangle, or even a parallelogram. So just the basic shapes that you already have formulas for finding the area for. So let's review, let's review the area formulas for some of the common shapes that you will see. So a triangle is the area is one half the base times the height. A square, the area is length times width. I think your book, this is from page 278, says S squared, which is the same as length times width. Uh, I just use length times width because then you don't have to memorize two formulas for a square and a rectangle. So rectangle is length times width. Parallelogram is base times height. Uh, remember that a parallelogram leans, so your height is your straight up and down amount not your leaning amount. Trapezoid is one half the top base plus the bottom base times the height. Okay, and a circle, the area is pi r squared, being r being the radius. So we're going to get into some of that and try some problems and use some of these formulas. So they'll come back to you pretty quickly. Okay, I'm going to go under the document camera for a little bit and then we'll come back to the page. So I'm going to be starting on page 277, the Explore activity. So pause the video, get your book, and then I'll see you in a moment. Okay, this is page 277, the Explore activity. And I have divided the shape in your book up into three different composite shapes, or three different basic shapes from the composite shape. So the lines weren't here originally. I have put them in. I have a triangle I've divided one into. I've divided another into a rectangle and the third into a rectangle. And then I would use my area formulas to find the area of the triangle and the area of each of the rectangles. And then I would add the three areas up to get the composite shape, this entire blue shape here. Get the area of the whole blue shape. Is there another way that I could divide the shape to get the area? Could I divide it differently? Yes, I could. So I'm gonna see if I can get this next to this one so you can see the difference. So I could also divide the shape again by a triangle and a long rectangle and a small rectangle. And then I would find the area of the triangle, the long rectangle and the small rectangle, add them up and that would be the area of the composite. Doing it either way, I should get the same area because it's the same shape. Okay, now I want to look at example one on page 278, and we're going to have to label this. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is a composite shape, and it may not be as easy right away to see the different basic shapes that are in this. But we're actually going to figure out the area now. So we're going to put a line through, I hope I did this right. And I think actually this needs to come up to this point right here and then this kind of connects over here so let's do that make it look like it does in the book and then maybe i can get rid of this little line right here so it doesn't mess us up okay so what i'm going to do first is divide this into two shapes and i'm going to divide it into a parallelogram right here so a parallelogram is this shape. And then what is this shape here? What is the bottom shape? Right, that's a trapezoid, right? So I have a shape one and I have shape two. And now I'm gonna find the area. So it gives us the dimensions. So we have 
this side being three centimeters, we have the top being 10 centimeters. We have that little tail, does it tell us? It gives these little symbols, look at that. And there's symbols over here. These symbols mean that these two sides are equal. So if this is three, this one is also three centimeters. Even though it's not labeled, it's labeled with these little marks. And then you have two centimeters here and seven centimeters here. And I also see the little marks here. We'll come back to where the other marks are that match that. And then this is four centimeters on this side. And then we've got a dashed line. I'm going to change colors for that dashed line. And use black for that. That comes down right dot 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 there. And that is 1.5 centimeters. 1.5 centimeters. And then there's a little symbol. It's a right angle, right? And we also have another one coming down right here. Oops, I can use black for that one too. Right here. And that one is labeled 1.5 centimeters. And there's a right angle mark right up in this corner here. Did I miss anything? I just missed, missed those dashes. So these dashes here are up there. And these dashes here are there. And then I don't know why there's dashes here, because that isn't the same length as that or that. So I'm not sure why they put that in there like that. Unless it's a, a one. No, they're all twos. Oh. OK, we do know that this is the same length probably as this. That's what that means. Why this is here, I don't know. OK, so let's figure out how we can find the area of this composite shape. So I'm going to try to move it up just a little bit. And I'll just use black here. So what we want to do is find the area first of the parallelogram, area of parallelogram. It's got the word parallel in it. Two sides of a parallelogram are parallel, and these two sides also are parallel. So area of a parallelogram is base times height. So base is this, and we know that that's 10 because that's also 10, right? So 10 times, what's the height? The height is not the leaning side, the height is the straight up and down amount. So 1.5. So 10 times 1.5 is 15 centimeters squared. That's the area of the parallelogram part, but we have to do the other one now. We have the trapezoid. So area of trapezoid is equal to one half. And when you do the test, by the way, you're going to want to have your formula sheet available to you. So I'll share the notes with you. It's also on your book page here. Uh, but I added some extra. I think I added the circle formula, which you also need, but that's not in your chart on page 278. So one half base one plus base two times the height. Okay. And I think it says it a little different in your book. Doesn't matter what order you put half and the height. I like to do it like this. So base one and base two, we have a base here and we have a base here. So one of our bases is seven. Doesn't matter which one's B1 and which one's B2. So we'll say seven plus, what's the length of this? We already decided that that was 10 because this is equal to that. And then we have one half and we have to figure out the height of the trapezoid. That's not the leaning sides. It's the straight up and down side, so that's 1.5. So then what I like to do is multiply, well, first I got to add this. So I add 7 plus 10 first. So 17 times 1.5 and then half of that. So I like to multiply these two together and then take half of it or divide it by 2. 
So 17 times 1.5 on my calculator, for sake of time here, 25.5, 25.5, 25 .5, and then I take half of 25.5. Divide that by two, I get 12.75 centimeters squared, or square centimeters, and then that's the area of my trapezoid. I also have the area of my parallelogram. I have to add the two areas together. So 15 plus 12.75 is equal to 27.75 centimeters squared. That is the area of my composite shape up here. So you just have to look around, be able to divide weird shapes into common shapes that you have a formula for. Now I would like to go to the Your Turn, page 280. So number four, at the top of page 280, there's a Your Turn problem. It is right here. Show you that. So if you need to pause the video, turn to that page, whatever you need to do, go ahead. So we're going to figure out the area of this weird shape. Well, this is a little bit tricky, but not too bad. So what we're going to do is we are going to put dashed lines. We're going to make a rectangle, okay? So we're going to put dashed lines here. And where do you think we're going to put the other one? Yeah, right here. So we're going to put dash lines here. So now we've made a rectangle, and then we have these two shapes. Well, if I was to take this shape and that shape and put them together, what shape would I get? I would get a circle, right. So this is half a circle, and this is the other half of the circle. So we're going to do, the, we're going to do a radius on one of these circles. The radius, this is R, and we know that equals 2 because I'm counting my units, one, two, two units. And I know the length of this by counting units. So one, two, three, four. And I know the length here by counting units. One, two, three, four, five. And does it say if it's a certain, yeah. Um, each unit length represents one foot. So each one of these squares is one foot. So this will be five feet, this will be four feet, and this will be two feet. Now we have to figure out the area of our basic shapes that we know. We know the rectangle, right? So let's figure out the area of our rectangle. Area of rectangle is equal to length times width. So length 5 with 4, 5 times 4 is equal to 20 feet squared or square feet. Now what about the circle? I'm going to do the area. I'm going to do the area of the circle because we know the whole thing together will make a circle, right? Area of a circle, this is why I put this on your chart for you, is pi r squared. Pi, we're going to use 3.14. For r squared, r is the radius. That's half the diameter of the circle. Radius here is 2, and we're going to square it. So it's going to be 3.14 times 2 squared. So 2 squared is 2 times itself, 2 times, right? So 2 times 2, or 4. So now it's 3.14 times 4. And on my calculator, if I was to do that, 3.14 times 4, I get 12.56. 12.56 feet squared. I add up my area of my rectangle and my area of my circle, and I get 12.56 plus 20. 32.56, 32.56 feet square feet. I'm not done though with the problem. I'm going to read the problem. It says, 
A window is being replaced with tinted glass. The plan at the right shows the design of the window. Each unit length represents one foot. The glass costs $28 per square foot. How much will it cost to replace the glass? Use 3.14 for pi. Okay, we're one more step. What do you think it is? We figured out the area, 32.56. And we also now have to do what? We have, it's gonna cost us $28 per square foot. So, this is how many square feet, and it's gonna be $28 times that. So let's times that 32.56 times 28. We get a total cost of $911.68. And I think that's the answer to the question. How much will it cost? It will cost $911.68. Okay, so figuring out these problems, they're multi-stepped. We are now gonna go to the guided practice on page 280. And I think there's some figures on there, so I'd like to just put that on the screen for us. So I'm gonna pause it for a minute and then I'll be right back, back with you. Okay, now I have page 280 up. And I actually think I'm gonna enlarge this so we can see the figures because there's a lot of little grids in here that we have to be able to see better. Um, here's your formulas for your area. You can also look on your book on page 278 if you need them. So I'm going to minimize that and enlarge. I'll just enlarge this. this. is probably all I really need to do. Okay, there we go. So we just did that one at the top. Now we're going to go down here. And what we want to do is read the problem. A tile installer plots. An irregular, I just want to make sure I'm recording. Yep, an irregular shape on grid paper. So it's a composite figure. Each square on the grid represents one square centimeter. So we know what length we're dealing with, what unit. What is the area of the irregular shape? Well, first we're going to separate, move it up just a little, separate the figure into a triangle because it tells us that. So where would I do that? I would do that right there. What else would we should separate it into? A triangle, a blank, and a parallelogram. Where is the parallelogram? The parallelogram would be right here, right? And the one that we didn't write down yet is the rectangle. Rectangle. Okay. Step two, find the area of each figure. Okay, I could use a little bit more space, but let's see. Let's try to do this without needing a lot of space. I think what I'll do, I'm going to make a little white box. So we have a little bit of space here to figure out these things. See if that helps. Okay, now the area of a triangle. Area of triangle is equal to one half base times height, right? I'll move this over just a little bit. And that is equal to, well, let's label our drawings that we've got. Base of our triangle, we're gonna count one, two, three, four, and it was in, I believe, centimeters. Uh, double check that. Yes, it was in centimeters, so four centimeters. And the height, remember that's the straight up and down, one, two, so the height is two centimeters, two centimeters, and that's going to be dash, 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 right here, height. Okay, we might as well figure and label these other ones here. One, two, three, four, five is our length of our rectangle. That's a bad five. I'll do the better one. Five is the length of our bottom. Our width is one, two, three. I'm not going to put the CM by all of them because I don't have a lot of space there. And I think that's all, all we need to do the height of the parallelogram. So the height of this is one, two, three. So that's not the leaning side, that's the height. Okay. So now, area of the triangle is one half base times height. So one half times the base, which we decided was 
four times the height, which we decided was two, correct? So one half of eight is equal to four centimeter, square centimeters. I'm not gonna put the little two there because I can't do that as easily on the computer. And that's the first part. The second part is the area of the rectangle. That's length times width. So the length we decided was five times the width, yep, three. So three times five is equal to 15 square centimeters. And then we have the area of the parallelogram, which is equal to base times height, which is equal to the base we decided is going to be five because remember the length of the sides of the parallelogram that are opposite are equal. So five times height, three. So that is also going to equal 15 square centimeters. And then our last step then is to add up all of our areas. And I'm gonna just draw a little bit of a line here. So if we were to add those all up, my line disappeared, but we get a total of do, 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 uh, 34, oops, how'd that get over there? 34, my line will probably come back in a minute, square centimeters. And there's my line. So yes, 34 square centimeters. So you could fill in those blanks if you wanted to. The triangle was four, the rectangle was 15, and the parallelogram was also 15, and you add those all up, so you would put them back in these blank lines here, 4, 15, 15, and you would get 34, 3, 4 centimeters cubed or squared. So the area of the irregular shape is 34, 3, 4, there, okay? Uh, now, number two. I'm going to clear my drawings. If you need to pause and get this down, go ahead. I am clearing them now. Number two is show the different ways to divide the composite figure. Find the area both ways and show your work. So we're given a little bit of space, the white space here. So we could divide it like this right here. And now we've got rectangle one and rectangle two, right? And let's figure out the area of that one. So that would be method one. And we have two rectangles, so the area is gonna be the same formula, like length times width. So we have to figure out the length of rectangle one. So rectangle one is gonna equal a length of 12 times the height of nine, right? 12 times nine is 108, and is the centimeters squared, I'll put square centimeters, and then rectangle two is equal to, what's the length? 20 times the height, nine. 20 times nine is equal to 180 square centimeters. And then we would add that together, 108 plus 180. That equals 288 square centimeters. So, I'll draw my line there now so you can see that it's adding. Okay, that's method one. Then we want to do method two. So I'm going to erase the line we have now and the numbers. What's another way that we could divide this? Pretty easy, right? Yeah, we can just divide it like this, right? And now we've got rectangle one and big rectangle two going this way, right? And we do method two. Move this over just a little bit. And we'll probably go over our shape a little bit. Call it method two. Again, we're gonna do rectangle one which is equal to length times width. This time we have a length of eight times a width of, and it's covered up, nine centimeters. 
9 times 8 is 72 square centimeters. Rectangle 2 is equal to our length of 12 times our width of 18. 12 times 18 comes to 216. I have to cover that up just a little bit. I'll put the 72 so we can add them up. And then we add the two, oops, we add the two together, 72 plus 216. And we should get the same thing, right? It's the same shape, just divided different ways. 288 square centimeters. So yes, we got the same thing both ways, okay? So that's how you figure out composite shapes. Let's take a look at number three. Clear this up. If I'm going too fast, pause the video, let me know. I mean, don't let me know, just pause the video. I won't hear you, anyway. Okay, clear the drawings, never mind. Number, th number three, Sal is tilling, tiling, tiling his entryway. The floor plan is drawn on a unit grid. Each unit length represents one foot. Tile costs $2.25 per square foot. When you see the word per, it means to multiply. That's a hint, always know that. How much will Sal pay to tile his entryway? Well, we have to divide this into two composite shapes that we know that we have an area formula for. How about right there? It seems about the only way. What kind of shapes do we got? Well, we got a trapezoid, right? And another trapezoid, it looks like. If I divide it right, actually, I think I'm going to divide it. Let's see. One, two, three, four. What if I divide it up here? No, nope, that's the right spot. So let's label what we got. So this space is one, two, three, four. And then what did that represent? Feet, right? So we'll just write four. And then up here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is seven feet. And then we need to come up with the height. So let's do some dashed lines. Remember, height isn't the leaning amount. The height is the actual up and down amount. Again, if you go to the doctor, they want you straight up and down when they measure your height. So that's supposed to be a dashed line. So how high is this? Well, one, two, three, four, five. So this height is five. It's hard to see that that's a five. It looks kind of like a three or a five combined. So let's just fix that. Okay, that's a five. And we need to do the base of this trapezoid and this. This isn't really a trapezoid, is it? What is that? Oh, that's a parallelogram, isn't it? So that's going to be also four. But the height of that, we have to figure out, dot, 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 all the way down. One, two, three, four. So that height is four of the parallelogram. So now we have to figure out our area. Now remember, this question has an extra step besides the area. We have to figure out the cost, um, it's how much it's going to cost him to tile this entryway. So the first one is the area. Actually, I think I'll move it up here because we can use it up here. Area of the trapezoid is equal to one half, and to work on memorizing some of these, base one plus base two times the height, right? So put those in there. We have one half of what's B1 and B2. Base one is four plus, oops, put this in parentheses, four plus seven. Part of math too is organizing uh, your, your, your math work neatly so that you can follow what you're doing as you go. A lot of errors that students make is because they haven't like laid it out in a nice, neat way. Uh, height is five, and then we get one half. We add up what's in parentheses first because of order of operations. Four plus seven is 11, and we'll put that parenthesis here, times five, and one half of 55, on your calculator, one half times 55, or half of 55 is equal to, and I believe I figured that out ahead of time for you, 27, 50, and what was it, centimeters? I gotta look at my book here. What was our measurement? Our measurement was square feet, so 27.5 square feet, 
that is for just the trapezoid. Then we have to do the area of the parallelogram, and that's equal to base times height. So we know the base is four, and we know the height. Let me see if that's going to work out. Four times four. Yep. What's four times four? Four times four. That is equal to mm -hmm, 16, right? So then we take our uh, square feet. Square feet. Then we take our 16 and we add it to our 2750. That'll give us the area of this entryway. So if we add that up, we would get, we're going to add 16 plus 2750, and you would probably do that vertically or you can do that with the calculator. I already did it ahead of time. That came to uh, da -da, 4350. 40 350 and then my last step is to times it because I the cost per tile or per square foot is 2.25 or two dollars and25 cents so I'm going to time 4350 times by two dollars and25 cents for each square foot and we have 43.5 square feet so that comes to a total of Ninety-seven dollars and I'm run into my shape here. Eighty-eight cents. Let me erase my four for the moment. Eighty-eight cents. So ninety-seven dollars and eighty-eight cents. A little dollar sign there. Okay. And number four it says, what is the first step to finding the area of a composite figure? Everyone needs to know this. What's the first step that you're going to do when you do these? Yes, you're going to divide the shape, the weird shape we'll call it, into basic known shapes, right, that you have the area formula for. We'll just leave it like that. But the ones that you have the area formula for, like a triangle, a parallelogram, a trapezoid, a square, a rectangle, right? Okay. Now, homework, I'm going to clear this. Homework is, bring this back up here. Yeah, I'll move myself for a moment. So your homework is to do page 280. We just did that together, but I still want to see that you've done it. Guided practice page that we just did. And then page 281, independent practice. So if you have any questions in the meantime, you can feel free to ask me those questions, and I hope that you have a good day. Bye.